the Shiki Science Show clips. Like we've spoken about intervening at early stage of life, but also there's a lot of research looking at trying to um, like uh, use uh, regenerative medicine or uh, rejuvenation technologies later in life to help alleviate different age associated diseases. And so I was just wondering, like to you, what do you think are the main or like most promising strategies in terms of rejuvenative approaches? Mm. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean we, uh, we really don't understand what rejuvenation means, actually. So, uh, like, even the clocks, uh, the kind of aging clocks, all of the clocks that have been developed so far, they are aging clocks. So they quantify uh, the direction from the young to, to the old state. Uh, whether they would work in the opposite direction, actually, it's unclear. It's it's commonly used, and so we use, of course, as well. And we kind of assume that uh, if we uh, subject uh, a system, biological system like cells or mice, to some treatment and observe a decreased biological age, we assume it's a rejuvenation. Um, uh, I think uh, there is one component of that is rejuvenation, but not 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 the entire kind of response. So what, I, what I'm thinking is that we need to develop um, uh, clocks that would be more tuned to, to, to test for rejuvenation. So some kind of rejuvenation clocks. Such clocks do not exist yet. And because uh, when we look, uh, when we kind of think about the aging process uh, and quantify it, these clocks would necessarily be a composite Kind of uh, composite clocks. Uh, uh, some changes, age related changes, would be uh, would, would would be damaging, would, would be uh, true aging. Some would be neutral changes, but they still could quantify the aging process. And some would be uh, adaptive, or like we call them adaptive or protective changes that uh, that are activated in response to age age related changes. Like the kind of the system finds a new homeostatic state in a way. So they could still quantify aging, but they would have nothing to do with rejuvenation. So I sometimes give this um, a metaphor uh, of using um, um, adaptive changes in the form of like a glasses or hearing aid or like a walking cane or some, some other features. And we could develop potentially a clock based on this. Uh, you maybe collect uh, parameters, maybe 10 or 20 parameters like that, and give a weight to each parameter and quantify aging. I think it you know, would be quite reasonable accuracy. Um, and then we would fire all of the doctors. There is no doctors, no glasses, no hearing aid. And based on this, everybody is rejuvenated because the, the way, but it's not, yeah? So this means that uh, aging changes have many, many features and only some of them quantify, truly represent aging and therefore would represent rejuvenation. So when we apply existing clocks and we see rejuvenation, there's a clearly there's a component of it, but it cannot be 100% sure because we don't know the contribution. I don't know if it's explained clearly or not, but uh, anyway, so we need a new generation of machine clocks which are specific for rejuvenation. They simply do not exist, and I don't think anybody, at least I haven't heard people even kind of conceiving this idea, just kind of asking a question that we need a different type of clock. And then by using this clock, we could we could address, uh, better address rejuvenation. So clearly rejuvenation is possible because we know this uh, developmental rejuvenation, embryonic rejuvenation, we know Yamanaka type rejuvenation. And uh, I suspect there will be some other types as well. Uh, and we are working on it as well, uh, but I think many, many labs are working on it. Uh, and we need to better understand, better quantify it. And, and then, uh, you know, once it's done, then we could broaden up and develop screening approaches and so on. But we just don't have essential tools yet for that. Yeah, that's, no, that's super interesting. And so one question I was going to ask was, how would you like validate such a rejuvenation clock? But then I was thinking, We've just spoken about early development and that early rejuvenation process. Is that not something that we could potentially use to develop a rejuvenation clock or not? Yeah, but you, but you see, it goes back to the what we discussed earlier, like on the in the essence of aging. So, what do we mean by aging? So, and uh, if we 
again, so I may be wrong, but this is my thinking, it's, it's a damage, right? And so if you focus on quantifying this uh, damage or negative consequence of, of metabolism or of being alive, then we follow aging, therefore we could follow rejuvenation as well, based on this, if we are able to distinguish various aging with the changes. What I don't like is that there are so many papers, so many studies when somebody just look in a particular a gene, for example, some metabolite and observe, okay, that gene uh, decreased with age. Let's bring it back to the youthful level and call it rejuvenation. To me, it's simply nonsense. We, we cannot be sure because we don't know if that age changes in negative, positive, or neutral. You just cannot say anything uh, based on this. We need to distinguish which one is which. Uh, and yeah, so... In general, I, I think uh, in the aging field, we just need more uh, kind of fundamental uh, studies, kind of um, conceptual studies, just kind of trying trying to define the aging process because ultimately this is essence. So many people claim that we already know everything about uh, aging. We just need to develop quickly interventions. I, I think this is also wrong. We need more fundamental studies. We need more funding into the basic biology of aging. Uh, not really translational yet. I mean, translation is also good. I mean, this this may actually increase funding for the field, but we need basic work. We need to build the, the foundation for, for the field, which does not exist. That's, yeah, really well said. I mean, I... Is, is, it, is it amazing that, you know, I was at the conference two years ago and there was a questionnaire given about to define aging to researchers in the field, and everybody gives a different definition of aging. So hmm. it's, it's, it's just, yeah. It's just amazing. So we disagree at the very fundamental level. So we need to work on that and really to try to find consensus or develop or do some experiments to at least to clarify this, this basic, basic problem. Exactly. No, that was really well said. And so um, obviously, yeah, there is a, a lot of research. And I was just uh, wondering, you've done some work on like naked mole rats. You've done work on human cells. Is there any model organism that you would love to work on or think would really help us to address some of these questions? You know, we, we're thinking of, yeah, about other organisms. Uh, over the years, actually, I worked with maybe 20 different organisms, all the way from bacteria, archaea, flies, yeast. We work on yeast actually in the lab currently also. It actually, it's a very good model organism. I really like it. Single cell uh, eukaryote, it ages, and so many things can be done at a very basic level. Um, but we are focusing basically on, on mice, primarily mice, um, and uh, a little bit on human, like more rats and yeast. This is our current. Uh, there is one ongoing project on axolotl as well. So, and actually on xenopus. Yeah, you're right. There is uh, some that we work on. <laughs> we work on a few. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah, because I guess axolotls would be an interesting one to further understand rejuvenation, right? Because they have like limb regeneration. Is that correct? Uh, what um, ax and axolotls? They have a uh, lot of limb yeah. regeneration. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so and uh, uh, we want to address the question of the relationship between uh, regeneration and rejuvenation. That's another big question in the field in my mind. What's the relationship between these two? Uh, uh, it's still unresolved. But I think there are some good models for it. Uh, both both mammals, but but things like axolotl, for example, as well. 